Well, Carlos Alcaraz has just fast-tracked his way to one of the greatest teenage seasons of all time. Just when you thought we may have seen the best of it in the summer, he turned around and finished his slam season, capturing the US Open title in absolutely electrifying fashion. And in spite of all who were missing, in spite of all the upsets that happened this tournament, there's not a single person that can say that Carlos didn't win this one the hard way. Absolutely monstrous physical and mental effort after, again, a summer where it became clear that he was going to have to learn to play with a target on his back. You saw some visible frustration within him in his losses in Montreal and then Cincinnati. Albeit, you know, personally, I did think he would bounce back for the US Open. I saw that he was playing better in Cincinnati in spite of the loss to Nori. But even I, as staunch a believer as I have been in Alcaraz, the belief that he was about to capture his first major in 2022 had begun waning after Paris. I did still think that he had a great opportunity in New York. I've long said I believe hard courts are going to be his best surface and I feel a little bit vindicated in that for now. I had Alcaraz making the semi still but because of the slight dip in form and you know mental struggles over the summer, while I can confidently say I didn't hate the pick for anybody that did pick him before this tournament, my line of thinking definitely had shifted to maybe he might have to wait till next year to truly break through and what do you know? Turns out, like most of them, this particular generational talent happens to be quite the fast learner, and who would've thunk it? The names from round 4 all the way through the final may not scream murderer's row, but context does matter as far as that stuff is concerned. If you watch those matches, you know all of those guys pretty much threw the kitchen sink at Carlos Alcaraz. He took just about everybody's best punch and returned it with interest. This kid is an alien. I watched him in real time last year at the US Open with his real announcement to the grand stage of tennis where he made the quarters of the US Open. As an 18 year old he was already a physical freak to get through back to back 5 set matches against Tsitsipas number 3 at the time and then Goyavchik right after. Last year, that ended up being a bit too much for his body. This year, well, how about three straight four hour plus five setters, one of which went over five hours, then following that up with a beautifully managed match where he clearly was running on fumes a little bit against a guy in Kasper Ud who is without a doubt one of the best players in the world in spite of how much he is disrespected. That is just all time stuff and this guy really was the shot in the arm that this game needed. We have been waiting for pretty much over a decade for our next generational prospect to show up as the big three have aged. And over the last year and a half pretty much it's truly been incredible to see the leaps that he has made. He followed up that US Open quarter last year and finished that year strong didn't play at the beginning of this season until the Aussie Open and managed his schedule very carefully in attempt to get his body stronger and he clearly took the lessons from that US Open loss albeit there really was all the reason in the world to rest on your laurels I mean there's nothing to be ashamed of having the body break down at 18 years old coming off of back-to-back -back five set wins but clearly he wasn't satisfied and a year later, you see the fruits of that labor coming to the forefront of his US Open title run this year. He'd already put in a fantastic season and nobody really was going to look at him sideways if he ended this year slamless except for the people that were really honing in on you know, him being overhyped, but all season it should have been apparent that the hype was perfectly justified. And honestly, if you ask me now, he's ahead of schedule. The monkey is off his back of having to prove it in majors. I do feel like there is a bit of pressure that has been eased off his shoulders to where he could perform even better in slams next year as a result of getting this one out of the way. 
You talk about Juan Carlos Ferrero in the press conference saying he thinks that Alcaraz is playing at about like 60% of what his full potential could be. And maybe you can call that an exaggeration, but who knows? Juan Carlos knows his game better than just about anybody. Certainly not a stretch to say that given, you know, how all in Juan Carlos Ferrero has been with Carlos Alcaraz's development and taking him under his wing. And honestly, it's really not that hard to believe, considering how this run went. I said all year that it felt like just about every time you saw Alcaraz, it felt like something had gotten better. And throughout this US Open, what stood out was net play and fitness, of course. You know, with a side note, the way he volleyed all tournament long, I was wondering to myself, I was like, I thought he had great hands already, but... He looks like an even better volleyer than I thought. So many incredible stick save stabs, and his finishing at net just was terrific. He never really wasted an opportunity to finish a point off at net and recognized all the right times to come in. And as I said earlier, he was not physically 100% in the final. He looked weary at times, and really what saved him was his net play in that final. He came in. I believe over 40 times, you know, one of which was that incredible drop volley stretched out down set point in the third set. And then once he played the breaker as well as he did to follow it up, it was one of those feelings he got with the big three where, you know, that really was an inflection point in the match. And if you're their opponent, you needed to take advantage of it. And after that, it kind of felt like it was never in doubt in the fourth Obviously, Alcaraz is able to ride that to the finish line, but as I was saying earlier, it's not that hard to believe that Carlos Alcaraz really isn't close to his final form. For one, as he was going downhill at the end of the fourth, you saw how good that serve can be. It's one of the biggest areas of improvement for Carlos, potentially, and in the last couple service games, his serve was damn near untouchable not only was it really not under siege in the fourth but there was just a flurry of unreturnable serves it was basically carlos alcaraz's version of serve botting if you even thought that that could be a thing how scary a prospect is that if you're gonna have to face this dude over the next couple of weeks and then secondly you saw all tournament pretty much from the fourth round on It's something I noted coming into this tournament is Alcaraz as is, you know, there's so many fluctuations within a match with him. He can be just out of this world for one portion of the match and then next he's leaking errors. But best of five does help him a lot with being able to manage those fluctuations. There's a lot more wiggle room to be able to sustain those dips and be able to reset and you know, pretty much fourth round through the final was an example of that for Alcaraz. And again, some of that is literally just the product of, you know, being young and reckless. So it really goes to show, you know, as the years pass, there still is quite a bit of room for improvement. And that is, again, quite the daunting prospect if you're going to have to face him. But overall, you know, this Alcaraz title... This whole Alcaraz season has been such a great shot in the arm for men's tennis. The guy seems very personable, great head on his shoulders, and obviously it goes without saying he's utterly electrifying on a tennis court. I said it before, I believe in my video about the Alcaraz Sinner match that, you know, he just does something that makes jaws drop brings the whole stadium to their feet and really just puts something forth that you perhaps have never seen before on a tennis court just about every single match he plays and it's that alone that is going to draw so many new fans to the sport it already has the guy created such a massive mainstream appeal throughout this u.s open run you know all tournament long you had casual tennis fans and people that just love sports not necessarily tennis completely immersed with whatever he was doing during this tournament and that is so fantastic for the sport it really is a beautiful thing to see the sport replenishing its future 
in a way that you know i honestly have never seen before considering when i started watching in the early 2010s and really all i can say is take about carlos alcaraz very deserving made in slam win as well as you know adding to the long list of superlatives he's created this year now the youngest world number one ever and honestly even as a nadal fan and having won two slams this year as much as it pains me that we may not get back to the number one spot with an alcaraz win here it really is much easier to digest considering how consistent carlos has been all year validating it now with a slam win he is a very deserving world number one and he has already proven to undoubtedly be great for the game and its future moving forward but that will do it for this video thank you so much for watching editing post you know finishing this video apologies for this video going up relatively late it was done early tuesday morning just had some internet issues in getting this video uploaded but i hope that you enjoyed and if you did again it would be much appreciated if you could drop a like help this video perform better in youtube's algorithm and subscribe to the channel if you're not already thank you again so much for watching and of course i will see y'all in the next one